Welcome to 60 Skills. And the topic of today's lecture is how to use Franz Barden, the key to the true Kabbalah. Okay, this is a topic of discussion that I don't get to get into with many people. Now, the reason for this is rather simple. Very few people have actually bothered to do any of the work contained within this book. That said, I'm making this video a bit for posterity, so let's begin. Well, first of all, you need to work your way through the single letter key of Franz Barden's The Key to the True Kabbalah. This can take a couple of years, but this is not the end of the process. Interestingly enough, Barden points out what he wants you to do with this on the cover of the book. The fact that more people don't seem to apply much thought to this is a bit of a surprise, but here we go. So the sequence of training detailed in this book is, first you learn how to do Kabbalah. Then you do the planetary meditations on the Kabbalah spirits. Several of these you will have to figure out on your own through path working because they are not all contained in Barden's second book. Third, you will then do meditations on the 12 constellations of the zodiac. Again, you will need to do path working in order to determine the appropriate spirits for this. Finally, at the end of this, you will also meditate upon the Sephiroth, again from a Kabbalistic standpoint. Now, this is clearly indicated in the drawing on the cover of the book. Why do you want to do this? Well, ultimately, you will invoke the power of the letters via a four-part concentration. Zephyroth, constellation, planet, letter. So you will be utilizing the Sephiroth at the Akashic level, the constellations at the mental level, the planets at the astral level, and the letters at the vital level. Along the way, you're also going to need to practice the four-letter combination for all four elements plus Akasha. The one for Akasha you will also have to figure out. So this is the basic outline of the system that Franz Barden had intended in his book. Now, Personally, I've worked through the first two stages of that. I have worked through the single letter formula. I have worked through the four letter formulas for the individual elements plus Akasha. I have also worked through all of the Kabbalah spirits going from the near earth realm all the way out to Pluto. Now at the end of this, you have to come back and reground through the sun sphere. So you will do a series of workings over a couple of months involving invoking the sun sphere and then counterbalancing it with the lunar sphere. The reason for this is twofold. One, on the way out, particularly past Saturn, you begin to accumulate a fair amount of what can best be called Akashic grunge from some of the different entities and energies that you run into. Additionally, once you get to Pluto, you will encounter extrasolar energies and entities that can take you beyond the realm of our solar system without going directly to the constellations. Doing this requires invoking a very specific kind of energy to protect you, as the solar system itself provides a great deal of protection to individuals from these aberrant extrasolar energies. One of these combinations is the LUD letter combination. Again, that's L, U, and D. I'm sure there are others, but a failure to run one of these energies or to go past the solar system in conjunction with an extrasolar spirit that can provide the necessary protection for you can be quite damaging to a human being as our bodies and minds are simply not designed to handle this stuff. Now, why do you want to do that? Well, it turns out the extrasolar region, while not having a direct influence upon this solar system, 
ideas and concepts and ways of doing things can be brought back from this extrasolar region into this region. Things like Buddhism, certain kinds of technology, and I could go on. You can also get an interesting history lesson on the origins of human beings writ large and a bunch of other things. Again, these won't have much functional impact upon what goes on here because the energies are too diffuse but they can provide a very good information or for lack of a better term informational and i hate that way of approaching problems from a new direction and on the surface would appear to be the source of a variety of technologies that seemingly pop out of nowhere you'll still have to do the work to make those technologies a reality in the here and now but that is ultimately the source of some of this okay once you're done with that and you've regrounded into our solar system via a solar and moon meditation, then you can move on to the meditation of the constellations. This is something I am just beginning to explore now, so I don't have a whole lot to say about that. Towards the end of that year-long meditation, because you will of course do one month with each constellation of the zodiac, then you will meditate upon the ten sephiroth. I myself am not exactly sure how to do that at this point in time. But if it's anything like what happened towards the end of my planetary meditations, the exact nature of what has to be performed, I'm sure, will be made clear to me at that point in time. Because typically the way this works is when you finish working with one energy to an adequate point, and you move on to the next one, shortly before that happens, you'll end up meeting an entity that can explain what to do next. So this is the meta system contained in Franz Barden's third book, Key to the True Kabbalah, that a lot of people never get around to working with. What I can tell you is once I finished the planets and came back and regrounded, the amount of energy I was capable of developing, particularly at an Akashic level, had grown a lot and is going to take a while to get used to. So if you like the contents of today's speech, please give us a like, please hit the like button down below and subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like to learn more about this kind of thing, please check out the links contained in the details box below. Otherwise, train hard and be well.